start. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if we we're meeting for the first time, my name is Habiba from the Trekking Pals. And for the last few weeks, we've been inviting travelers from all over the world to share their travel stories. We started first with featuring Tanzania and East Africa. And now we are opening these live streams to people from all over the world. And today I am joined by a traveler that I admire a lot. And she inspired a lot of traveling. Oh, especially God. In <laughs> so uh, today I'm joined by Zainab uh, from Travel with uh, with Zainab. She's a, a fellow Moroccan traveler, and I'm gonna let you introduce yourself, Zainab. Okay, thank you so much, Habiba, for this warm welcome. So so glad to be uh, with you on this live. Finally, we made it. Uh, I'm Zainab or Zainab. As is because you know like in Morocco we say Zineb but it's uh, Zainab uh, in in uh, in classical Arabic and I've been uh, talking about traveling uh, solo uh, female travel since I guess 2014 2015 and I started the page on Instagram uh, on, on Facebook it started with this page on, on Facebook travel with Zineb where I was posting content in Arabic and in English, and uh, with uh, and I I did an um, Instagram account, but like I lost it. It was uh, entirely dedicated to traveling, and then for like reasons that are out of my control, I just like uh, stopped blogging uh, altogether for some time. But um, I did a lot of blogging, and currently I'm trying to develop my brand into content creation, but like a more diversified portfolio of content, uh, ranging from video to um, to blogging to uh, uh, yeah, so like photography also, and uh, it all stems from my um, love for humanitarian photography because I did some humanitarian work uh, in the past few years, and it inspires me to to uh, do more photography and explore my talents and develop my talents for photography and videography. So I'm so so glad to be here, and yeah, so <laughs> let's get so, into it. Let's get let's right. Get yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's start. Let's start and from the question. I just have a question before we go. Like, how do I share this with with uh, people? Like, with with my um, following. I, I I do I send messages or what? So people who follow you, they will already receive a notification once you go live. Oh, so right. you, yeah, they should already get that. Otherwise, okay. you they, can probably. They, I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like few people from, from my friends already here. So yeah, that's so cool. Okay. Cool. All right. So, <laughs> so let's start. With um, uh, Zainab, uh, where were you born? Where were you raised? And how did your love of travel start? I want to know from the very beginning and then take it all the way up until now. Okay. Um, so I, I'm Moroccan, uh, born and raised in Morocco, Casablanca. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, I can't really point out like when uh, my passion, like my real passion for traveling started. But I can remember that when I was a little girl, I used to like uh, do uh, photo colleges of faraway places. Uh, of the universe, like of stars and galaxies and stuff like that. And I also used to read um, a child magazine, child-friendly magazine that was, the name of it was Majid. I, I don't think that there is like a Moroccan or an Arab <laughs> child didn't read Majid. Like it was like the highlight of every week because uh, yeah, it, it came right from the Gulf area. And so I was obsessed with Majid. I was obsessed with Majid, like, and I used to read all these stories of people who go to um, faraway places and like uh, Jordan, Egypt, uh, Tunisia, uh, Antarctica, you know, it was so fascinating for me, the little girl from the like very small uh, quartier or neighborhood in Casablanca. So that was, that was uh, something that really ignited that, uh, that love for discovery and traveling. And I got all pumped up when they published a poem that I made about uh, 
uh, I, I remember like uh, olive trees in Morocco or something like that. So they published that for me. So and since then I was like, okay, I, I can go places. I mean, if I got published on Majid, it means that I can, that I could, I can do much more, you know? So yeah. And then uh, like um, after graduating in, uh, from, uh, from university in Rabat, I went to the US for for my uh, to complete my bachelor degree in international relations and that was like my first big international uh, solo travel uh, but before that i went to paris to receive a, an award for uh, about arabic and it was just like a, a concours i don't know how to say concours in in, in english like an assessment in the language of arabic and uh, that was the very first time i had my passport uh, done wow. or made uh, how old? yeah uh, I, I it was back in 2010 2009 wow. 2010 that was the first time i made my passport um, and then I went from there to Morocco and then to France to finish my master's. Uh, and then I did another master's degree in Italy uh, in uh, development studies. And since, since the time, actually, I started traveling in Europe, that's when, because I became financially independent by then. So, like, I could afford somehow, like, small trips and short trips uh, now and then and here and there. So, um, yeah. And the rest is history. <laughs> the rest is history. Yeah. So, and then uh, because of the nature of my studies, I went to Djibouti and, and from there I went to Burundi. And currently I'm in Mali. That's awesome. So Zainab today is joining us from Mali and she's done a lot of traveling in, in Africa. And we know how both of us, we love Africa. I mean, we're, we're African. Uh, but um, I know that every region in Africa is different. So what was your experience traveling to different regions of the continent and living in many countries at the same time? Yeah, it was wild. <laughs> it was interesting very very unique experiences in different corners of Africa and uh, like um, I like what people think um, when you go to like uh, different parts of Africa you experience hardships of course you do but like it's very unique you just have to um, open your heart and your mind and experience everything that um, it brings you. So uh, for instance, in Djibouti uh, or the Horn of Africa region, uh, because it's very close to the Gulf area, uh, especially Yemen and uh, Saudi Arabia and, and all these countries. So it was, it was quite something that I, I felt very connected with because people, uh, Djibouti is like majority of uh, Muslim, uh, Muslim country and uh, people uh, speak Arabic. There are some people who can speak Arabic. And so they have this kind of like um, tribal, uh, rural uh, customs that are very fascinating to me. And like the ethnic uh, diversity is very um, unique in that part of the world. Um, and because of the nature of my work also, like it just made um, a special cocktail of experiences that I was, uh, uh, I was uh, 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 introduced to. Um, and then uh, I went to Burundi <laughs> and Burundi, oh my God, it's a different uh, part of the world. Like you, ha you are in the heart of Africa. You are in the Great Lakes region. Um, uh, and it's like, uh, you know, because in this part of the world, with Rwanda and DRC, it's a, a region of the world that experienced a lot of traumatic uh, historical uh, um, events. So people tend to be very, um, I, won't, I won't say narrow-minded, but um, f fearful, fearful of the stranger uh, and um, uh, very uh, cautious. So for instance, it took me like over three months to feel welcomed wow. uh, or feel because I was living there so like or feel integrated because you know when I 
go to a country, I don't necessarily look for the expat community. If I, well, of course you meet the expat community because you work with them and you socialize with them. But like, I more uh, look for local people like Bur Burundians themselves or Djiboutians themselves because that's how I can experience the country firsthand. Definitely. They know the country, I'm a guest there. Even if I live there for like an extended period of time, they're, they're the key to really understanding the customs, uh, enjoying the food, um, uh, knowing a lot much more than you would know if you just stay in very limited uh, circle of people that are completely foreigners to the country and culture. You see, um, I just, I don't wanna go on like explaining because I see some questions coming up. Uh, what we will do with that, with the questions? So uh, we'll tackle the questions as we go. Um, I saw some questions about the topics of this conversation or discussion. Uh, we're basically talking about travel in Africa and Zainab from Travel with Zainab is sharing her great travel stories. And then we will be talking about solo travel specifically. So um, Zainab, we see that in your content as well. I feel like you're not traveling as a typical tourist who goes to the main attraction, but you're always immersing yourself in experiences that are very unique. Like the other day, I saw your video with the, in the wedding with the Tuareg tribe, which was so impressive. Tell us more about that experience. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Th that one. Uh, you won't believe, but back in 2018 or something like that, I made like a list of resolutions travel resolutions for for the for the new year i don't remember which year but i remember clearly that i made a list of travel resolutions and one of the resolutions was well i was very wide in my expectations and stuff and so like one of the resolutions was to go and live with a twerk uh, community for a month so i had already the idea that i want to meet and to experience the twerk culture firsthand uh it's somehow manifested you know so, and I, I Zineb, can... sorry to interrupt you Zineb. i think we might have some people who don't know who the twerg are maybe we'll start with explaining who yeah. are the twerg all right uh, so uh the twerg people are um are the inhabitant uh autochton uh inhabitant of the grand sahara so they are um, a community that is uh, distributed uh, uh, on different uh, countries in the Sahel area uh, of Africa. So you have, you, we find them in Niger, we, ha we find them in Mali, in Algeria, um, in Chad. Uh, so they are an Amazigh. They are, uh, I don't use the, the word Berber because it's a negative. It has a negative connotation, but they are Amazigh. We have Amazigh people in Morocco as well, but these are Amazigh who are completely different from the Amazigh we have in Morocco. And they have their own language, uh, which is Tamashek, which is also a variant of Tamazigh, uh, Tamazigh language, which is a language of North Africa, uh, um, in, inherent language of North Africa. Um, so the story goes as, as, as so, I was, uh, it was a Saturday or some, something, and I, 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 I was feeling uninspired for the day. I had no plan for the day, actually. I just wanted to go somewhere, like have a coffee, and then go do my nails. I love to do my nails. So I was in this local salon, um, uh, sitting, doing my nails, and then like suddenly two ladies, uh, like all wrapped in their melfa on drag, came in with their little girls and they um, <laughs> they were waiting for their turn to get their hair done and makeup done and stuff like that. And then the lady, I heard the lady speak in Arabic. And I was, wow, okay. Uh, <clears throat> and I asked her, do you speak, uh, you speak Arabic? And I asked her in, in Arabic. And she answered in perfect Moroccan dialect. Wow. I was. <laughs> and wow. she told me years in Mauritania studying Arabic literature. Wow. I was intrigued. And then she, I was like, what are you doing? And like, what, uh, what, 
and she said we have a wedding and it was there is something that you need to know about the Tuareg community in Bamako they are when they have a wedding or like a social gathering as big as a wedding or funerals or anything it's the, there must be only one per week or like per like i don't know one at once it's not like at a time it's not like they can have many Tuareg weddings happening in the same day because all the community needs to, to go to that one wedding. Yeah. So can you imagine yeah. that all of Tuareg of Bamako were at that wedding? It was wow. something that I've never seen uh, something like before, you know? So, and she was like, yeah, you can come. You can join <laughs> us. <laughs> you can imagine i i had nothing to wear like i uh, i was really like dressed casually for the day i was not pl planning for anything and she was no 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 don't worry i have a suitcase full of dra wow. you can have one <laughs> i said just That's... come like she, she left me no choice and i'm glad she didn't because i had the time of my life i had a really good time um it was something that I've never experienced before. Like, uh, we didn't see the bride. We didn't see the groom for like three yeah. hours or four hours day of, of celebrations. And um, uh, different uh, ceremonies, like tea ceremony, the ceremony where the ladies, they show like the, the gifts that the groom uh, or the husband bought for his wife or... Uh, uh, to be his wife and uh, um, there is also something else they do it's called griot here in Mali it's a it's a Bambara kind of uh, culture Bambara is the uh, is the is the largest ethnicity uh, of Mali uh, so they do something called griot and griot is some is someone who sings who sings um Chance eloge. What is eloge in English? Eloge. Madih. Uh, <laughs> that's a difficult yeah. one. They sing good stuff. They sing good, good stuff about the family, about the guy, uh, the the family of the groom, the mother of the of the of the bride. It's like it's a, an endless ceremony and. It's so interesting, you know, it's something that is very different from what we do. In Morocco, we have something called Ngefa. Ngefa is the lady who who prepares the bride uh, and the groom for the sitting and all of that. But it, this is completely different. These, they sing for you. As much as you give them money, they sing for you. All the good stuff that you want to hear about yourself, you will hear them that day. <laughs> everything. everything. Uh, like, so we have... Very it was very unique, yeah. That's and awesome. then is the, uh, when they sit to dance, they dance with their hands. They don't move like the 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 real the real the real uh, twergy women. They don't dance standing. They dance. They sit and they dance with their hands. It's very graceful. It's very beautiful to watch really uh, and we have something similar to this in morocco southern part of morocco uh, uh, in the in the southern regions Ayun, Tantan, Dakhla. yeah so it's uh, and even the women in the, in the videos that you shared zainab they look so pretty and beautiful they just have this charm that's very unique and you also you <laughs> blend in yeah. with them too <laughs> huh? you blend what? Like, yeah. I feel like I easily too. When I was there, when I was there, like people were addressing me in Tamashek. Mm. Not Which is the language. language. The, yeah, they were talking with me in Tamashek and then I'm like, Je suis désolé. I'm sorry, I don't understand anything. <laughs> That's awesome. And then they, they realized, oh, she's a foreigner, okay. But it just, yeah, we look alike because, you know, North Africa, Tuareg it, and, and all of this, we have like s quite similar genes. So we look alike. Yeah, a lot. We do. Um, so we have a few comments coming in. Karim is saying, love what you guys do. Be an inspiration to the rest of women out there. Uh, That's we have my huh? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Karim. Thanks. 
uh, we have wedding songs that like that too, a group that comes to our wedding and do that. Um, I'm not sure what weddings are we talking about, but thank you for your yeah. comment. That uh, Insta Baishi. Which country is that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay, so so this is this is your experience uh, in Mali. Um, when you are traveling, I mean, we have some unique culture back home in in Morocco, being in North Africa. And so, when you travel in when you travel in other sides of Africa, do you feel like there are some similarities? There are some differences. What are some of the big cultural shocks that you had in in Africa? Okay, I, I, I wouldn't say like big cultural shocks, but like um, a, a, a very specific perception of women traveling by her own that is very disturbing sometimes. Uh, th it's the truth uh, because when a woman, when a man, like uh, I, I just see this uh, inside our Moroccan community of travelers. When there is a man, a Moroccan traveler, adventurer who goes places, uh, you know, like, um, they receive a lot of encouragement. They receive a lot of uh, support and as if they're like uh, making a, an exploit, uh, you know, like something heroic and all of that. Yeah, but like when the woman does the same thing, <laughs> the same way, she's... Uh, she's stereotyped, she's labeled, she's, uh, no, but like, uh, aren't you afraid? Um, uh, uh, what are you going to do alone? Why are you traveling alone? Why aren't you traveling with uh, a guy? Why aren't you traveling with your brother? Why aren't you traveling with your husband? Like, you know, it, uh, I receive a lot of these questions, like, it's, it's constant. But like, you know, I decided, and it's also linked to the appearance of the women, like uh, a, a woman, an adventurer, a uh, traveler is, is not expected to look a certain way when she's doing adventures, like she has to look a certain way, like she has to look like a boy, she has to be a very... Um, you know, like dress in a certain way that, that doesn't draw attention. I totally agree with that when you are inside local communities. And now we will get to that when we will talk about like tips and tricks for safety for solo female travel in Africa. But there is this like kind of like labeling that goes along the way. You are not expected to wear dresses and like and post a picture wearing a dress. Uh, and post the other day a picture wearing your boots uh, climbing uh, Kilimanjaro. You know, it's it's it it, it it's it's uh, it it creates dichotomy in the minds of uh, of, of especially like the the uh, male uh, community or the male male followers. Like um, no, you have to stay in one box, this box, and don't go out of that box. Mm. What I'm trying to do through my account is to change that completely. A woman adventurer can do anything and can be anything and can dress any way she pleases and still be a woman adventurer and go places and do amazing stuff, create content, meet local communities, tell amazing stories of people she meets, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like give accounts of... Um, of unique customs and, and uh, traditions. Uh, her way, because everybody has a way of telling a story. It's not because you went, thousands of people went to Tanzania. Habiba? Mm -hmm. Thousands of people went to Tanzania and Kenya and they told stories about those travels. Mm -hmm. But every time it's different. And thanks God that we are different right. and we, that we have different ways of telling stories. Otherwise, we won't see all uh, these different sides of the same story and from different angles and experience different things. Everyone, when they travel, they experience different things. And the experience is unique and it doesn't invalidate other experiences or other ways of telling the same story, you see? So for me, that's what I'm trying to do through my account. And as I told you, I, like, I lost my old account 
uh, unfortunately, it's not, it was not hacked or anything. It's just that I lost complete access to it and I can't retrieve it. And I was, do, I was trying to do that through my other account. But on this account, I'm trying to reinvent the wheel and to um, say that like, uh, voila, when you go to Parc National du Mali, you, of Mali, this is what you can do. And you know, every experience is different. I'm just trying to portray an Africa that is visitor and tourist friendly. You can do this even in the most harsh of situations and settings. Mali is a country that we know as a war zone. And it is, it is an inst a politically unstable country, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of stunning stuff to do. A lot of amazing stuff to 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 experience in this country, from the food to the custom to the weddings to everything. Everything. There is a large spectrum of stuff that you can do here, and in and and pretty much in every African country. And we have uh, what we call untaped uh, potential in Africa. So there is pretty much uh, everything for all kind of tastes. You can do everything in Africa and experience it your way without jeopardizing your security and safety and all of that. Absolutely. I love this, Zainab. I love that you brought this up because this is what's beautiful about the travel community is that every single person out there is different and they have different history and they bring a different perspective. So even if we both of for example, we travel to the same countries. You're, the stories that you're going to say or share with the world and the stories the other traveler is going to share are going to be different, which is beautiful because you get to see the world a different way every time. Um, also, about Africa, I feel like, I mean, you have traveled solo to most of these countries in Africa, and a lot of people find Africa to be intimidating. Not only its role, Absolutely. it's our oh, way. I guess. Yes. It's difficult. Yeah. So, so for you as a solo female traveler, and you've been doing this for a long, long time, what are some of the tips that you can share about traveling solo in Africa specifically? Plan ahead. Prepare. Okay, I must be honest. I don't do this systematically because I like the, the sense of adventure. Like, uh, I, had, I have this crazy idea. Like, just recently I was thinking, okay, I will go to the airport and I will buy, it will be like a sort, sort of an experiment and I will buy the cheapest ticket. I will find what is the cheapest ticket and what, when it will take me. So I have this kind of, of ideas, but I don't recommend it. I recommend planning ahead of time. Because as you said, Africa might be intimidating, especially with the low coverage, uh, that, uh, like media coverage. It's starting to change with a lot of uh, travel startups and ventures that are trying to uh, get the information out there. Uh, so it, it, if you do like your research, use YouTube, use Instagram, uh, send emails, uh, inquire um, about like the vaccines that you need to get before you travel, um, your accommodation, uh, your transport, all of this. You need to have like uh, at least like uh, uh, a, a roadmap with like bullet points and uh, it, it will procure you a sense of safety and um, confidence also when you are traveling to that country, especially if you've never been there. Uh, Africa is, is not a beast, it's not, um, it's not, uh, it's not uh, dangerous. You have to, to, to use your common sense also. Like you won't go to a war zone. Of, or, or right, yeah, like you know, you, you will follow the news and all of that. You go to places where you can travel, obviously. So that's that's my first tip. Second tip, blend in. Mm -hmm. Blend in, keep a low profile, and be humble. When when you are with, because you know, yeah, you're paying a huge amount of money to get to get there. Um, you want to experience, you, have, you want to have a wide experience. It depends on your objectives of the, of, the, of the tourism or the travel. But I really recommend you to stay humble because at the end, first and at the end, you are a guest in that country. It's not your country. Those people have a set of, uh, of values. The community that you are visiting, they have set of values. They have set of 
um, uh, uh, unspoken codes, cultural codes, um, and norms, and just like generally unspoken rules that uh, they do, you know? So uh, get informed about that. Be prepared and um, also uh, have have uh, attire that, that is uh, comfortable and that won't get you a lot of attention, especially if you're a, a woman traveling alone. Like, yeah, when I'm traveling, it's not like I'm, 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 I'm based in, in, in Mali. I will go out uh, to this restaurant and it's different. It's a different kind of uh, experience. When you're based somewhere and you dress somehow to go some places and stuff, it's completely different when you are traveling yeah. or discovering. You have to be uh, humble and you have to uh, uh, dress accordingly and blend in as much as possible. Keep a low profile. And uh, try to make friends who are like-minded, who would have your back, uh, it, you never know. You you never know what might ha might happen uh, when you are moving somewhere. Like share your location systematically with a trusted party, but really someone that you can trust. Um, get a local SIM card, of course, when you get there. Uh, a lot of things that go along the preparation. Yeah. I like. And, uh, I like be you confident. Yeah. yeah, be confident in your approach. Like when you are. Uh, wandering in new places, act like if you have been there already. That you know the place, even if you don't know the place. Yeah. That's I like your a lot, a lot of pressure. People will just ignore you. Like you are, you, you as if you don't exist. Like just do mm -hmm. it. You know, be confident. I like your tip, Zainab, about uh, talking to people just being friendly because you never know what experiences it could lead to. Like when you said you went to get your nails done and just with a smile, you talk to this random person and it led to a great experience. So it's always yeah. good to, to initiate conversations and be friendly, right? Yeah, absolutely. But you also need to be, um, as I said, use your common sense. Yeah. Like, you know, you need to, well, it you will get there with time, like read the, through the lines and the spot, the red flags and all of that, but that we will acquire it with traveling. If you don't experience, you won't learn. So you have to get there, out there, experience and learn, you know, the good and the bad, but you need to be prepared and cautious so that the experience doesn't lead you somewhere that, uh, that is dangerous for your life or for your physical integrity or anything. Absolutely. Um, so I have to say, uh, Zainab, when you inspired my travel to Tanzania and uh -oh. <laughs> back, back in, I don't remember what year it was, but you were posting about Zanzibar and I would see, I read your blog. I, I was really reading your blog and Facebook and I remember seeing you at the giraffe uh, manor in Kenya. And then I saw your pictures in Zanzibar with the fruit trays. And I just told myself, you know what? This is a place that I'm going to. Uh, so what was your experience like traveling in Tanzania? Since it's one destination that we're trying to promote a lot. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. My story with Tanzania is very, very unique. Uh, because I remember it was in uh, 2016. Or, yeah. 2016 or 2017 I don't remember but uh, it was my birthday and I had worked as an au pair uh, okay because when I was in in uh, in Europe I was doing my studies I was doing my master's but I could do my master's um, remotely like I could uh, combine the remote classes and the physical presence so I chose to do au pair experience another country through being an au pair. So I went to Germany for six months and I worked and my, I was very lucky because I was with a family that was very well off. So I was well paid. It allowed me to save a lot of money. And uh, I was like, okay, I want to gift myself something memorable. 
And I started looking through uh, internet about like, and I found a very good deal. Like you can't believe how much was the ticket. It was like a round trip ticket with Turkish airlines. I remember it very clearly, uh, 570 euros wow. uh, from Frankfurt to Zanzibar. Wow. Round trip with Turkish Airlines. So I was like, no. So I, 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 will, get, I will get this ticket. And you know, I bought it like in six, 10 seconds. I bought the ticket. So I was going to Zanzibar. I was going to Zanzibar for my birthday. I, <laughs> I went to Zanzibar and um, I tried. Since that I had the page that was very, very active by then. Like I had like thousands of likes on the posts that I write and stuff. Um, I showed this to a hotel that I liked and, and, and they were, yes, yeah, do some work for us and we will give you free stay for five days. And it was a luxury hotel. It's not like it's a, a small uh, boutique hotel, uh, family owned and run by the family. It's a family of German people, but they were born and raised in Tanzania. So they speak Swahili, like local people and everything. And they would uh, occasionally invite me to have like dinners with family and stuff like that. And to go do some experiences like ride a bike, uh, go uh, out in the ocean uh, for sunset, take pictures, write a blog post about them. And they were very satisfied because right after my uh, trip, I remembered that Anwar, I don't know, I don't know if they're watching, but like Anwar, uh, who was the manager, told me, you know what, we got a lot of traffic from the article you wrote. And we're so happy we had it and all of that. So I was, I was, you know, okay, in my mind. Uh, fake it until you make it right but i was like i've never done this before man <laughs> i've never done this before but i didn't tell you this like i was i kept this to myself and uh i just did this and i was so happy and uh you know i told you if you don't, you don't experience uh if you don't experience the thing you won't know what it will lead you to and you know it led to a great friendship it led to a great friendship. And the last time I was in Tanzania, I met with them. <clears throat> they are located in Jambiani. For any, every, anyone who is interested, they are called the Blue Oyster Hotel. And they are located in uh, Jambiani. And they are the best boutique hotel in, in, in Jambiani. And they are the friendliest uh, crew there. People are amazing. The food is stunning. Everything was great. And I met them like last time I was in, in Tanzania and it was just in uh, August, 2021. Yeah, no, not 21, uh, 20, August 20, I met them. I met the whole family and Anwar and his brother and all of that. So this is like, what was the really the, the highlight of my trip to Tanzania. I've never done safari in Tanzania, but I did safari in Kenya. Uh, in Tanzania, I was just in Zanzibar and in Dar es Salaam. In Dar es Salaam, I went to meet uh, my dear friend, a man uh, who I met in Russia uh, during the youth, International Youth uh, Forum. Uh, and we kept in touch. And when I was in Tanzania, I told her, oh no, come on, come, come on in, let's do uh, Dar es Salaam. So she showed me Dar es Salaam, uh, you know, it, this is what I cherish from traveling. It's the, the friendships and the awesome local people that you meet. And you can create amazing things, you know? You can really do amazing things. It doesn't have to be lucrative, really. It doesn't have to be lucrative. Sure. It just, you know, like a human. Let's talk about like the human side of all of this. This is what really, I, what I cherish from my, from my uh, travel experiences. That's awesome, uh, Zainab. I didn't know. So you technically had your first collaboration or hotel collaboration in the world of travel in, in Tanzania, which is amazing. Th that's really nice. <laughs> and a long time ago. <laughs> um, so we have a few comments coming in. Uh, Insta, Veshi, I'm really enjoying this conversation. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is too cool from you. That's awesome. So, so this is, uh, and even like you said, with your blog, I think it was so well written that when you read it, you feel like you are living there. It's not just a typical blog where you're talking about best places to see, top 10 destination and so on, but it's really unique. Um, so that's why if you guys are not already following Travel with Zainab, I, I highly encourage that you do 
because um and i really mean it it's yeah. not follow it <laughs> one second <laughs> sorry to interrupt you and also people who join uh, from my account follow uh, follow habiba checking uh, pulse uh, habiba and alex follow follow her is yeah i really i really think that it's important because sometimes we get lost in the world of content creation sometimes the same thing keep repeating itself you keep seeing the same photos the same destinations but you rarely find someone who talks about unique experiences when you are truly connecting with people and the land and there is that human aspect of it which is really incredible so i appreciate what what you share zainab um thank you so thank you. oh i wish this conversation doesn't end you know i don't want it and oh, we're having a good time <laughs> so 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 let's you, you're traveling arizona wait for when i come to arizona yes yes i i invited you many times and the door is open for you to come whenever <laughs> Um, thank you all right so let's see so so this is travel in africa do you have any future plans this year to to go and explore any other african country or anywhere really in the world oh my god my bucket list is so so long and and i i just i just think that we don't have enough time in in like we need an entire life to to explore all like i'm talking of, about people who have a genuine passion for discovery so when you have that you feel like you don't have enough time to cover everything you want and we pray god that we you know he gives us long life and that we can do all of that and the next place i want to go the next place i want to go is south africa I want to go to South Africa. I want to go to, uh, and I want to do the uh, Virunga uh, National Park in DRC, um, where the uh, like you have the anti uh, poachers. Uh, you have one of the most popular stories of uh, of uh, gorilla protection and uh, and uh, wildlife conservation. So that's something I really want to do. Um, uh i want i want to go to india okay, i want wow. to go to india india intimidates me india and it scares mm. the hell really i don't know but like i should not be scared it's just that um yeah it needs a lot of i think india you need to be really mentally prepared to go to india um So yeah there are a lot of places I want to go uh, but mainly yeah. mainly I want to be able to uh to create content uh, the professional way I'm aiming for uh that's sure. an objective that I started to work on since uh, last um October and I've been I've been shooting here and there um you know the whole content creation uh is is very intimidating at the beginning so you know i'm learning along the way and trying different kind of content and learning and inshallah i would be able to post regularly by the way i have a youtube channel it's brand new i have only two vlogs um i'm also aiming to do some translation of habiba also has her own youtube channel mashallah doing great uh, check her last video where she um where she details um like the life of content creation uh, or part time wise uh, so uh, as you know i have a full time job but doing a lot of stuff on the side doing a lot of stuff like including content creation entrepreneurship uh, a lot of stuff so uh, my brain is yeah. it's just that <laughs> you know what i'm talking about it's just that uh, i need better planning uh, i need to get better at planning and um, and inshallah everything will go as uh, planned you know and as uh, uh, as i want and i wish for everybody to fulfill their um, uh, wishes and their dreams for 2022 uh, it's going to be an exciting year inshallah an exciting year yes. thank you thank you zainab uh, i i hope i mean i'm excited to see you go and explore new places and i do hope that eventually our paths will cross and we'll get to travel together and 
go and explore yeah. new places too. That would be nice. I'm confident about that. We will do that. <laughs> let's let's um, get let's some get uh, some questions and stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have a comment from uh, Insta Vishi. She said uh, about your comments on India. She said, "I don't blame you. I am from India, and I'm scared at times. I think planning for India can be intimidating because it's such a large country. So that that's yeah. understandable." And who else? So, go ahead. I think we 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 missed a lot of stuff. It's just that the comments keep disappearing. I don't know why. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, or if you have any questions that we you, we missed earlier, uh, you can post. Can them. you write them? We will have this this moment to answer the questions. Can you just write whatever questions you have? I received a lot of questions when I post the posters on my story, so it's the moment to ask these questions. Because, uh, yeah, we're here. So Habiba is here also. She can answer questions. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so why, why do we wait for questions, uh, Zainab? Where, when you travel to the United States, what are some of the places that you travel to? And what was your experience coming here for the first time? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> The U.S., my dear. I went to study in the U.S. So back then in 2012, I was an experienced traveler. Yeah. Complete an experienced traveler. Like, I did a lot of mistakes, really. And um, I was afraid. I was not courageous, you know? Like, I was, I was skeptical. I was cautious. Um, but I was mainly based uh, in, in D, uh, D.C., Washington, D.C., And uh, I, I was a full-time student at the American University. And I would occasionally go to Maryland, uh, Virginia, uh, Philadelphia. Um, I went to uh, um, uh, Tepe, Tepe, I don't remember. It's in Tam the South. Florida? We, yes, yes. Oh. I was there on a weekend trip. And that's it. And of course, New York, because I landed in New York. So I spent like uh, two days in New York and out from the U.S. I spent a week in New York. So, um, yeah, that's it. And I was just an experienced traveler. I didn't, I, I like, the U.S. is a place I want to revisit. Um, like, like a lot of other places, by the way, like uh, Indonesia. I need to go back to Indonesia. I need to remake all the things that I missed um, on my last travel and my, my last trip because I didn't travel as I want. I want. I was there with someone, but I didn't. I didn't travel as I want. I would have wished to travel, and Malaysia as well. So these are places I want to uh, redo, um, revisit, uh, fresh, and uh, remake uh, memories. So, and content, of course, and make content. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, very nice. Um, so we have, I think, 10 more minutes. Uh, if we're not seeing any questions here, maybe we can talk a little bit, Zainab, about how do you build confidence when you are a new traveler? I mean, I know for you, you've been to so many countries, you are very confident. Uh, you are a confident traveler, but for someone who's just starting, especially if they're traveling alone, how do you go about building that confidence over time? Yeah, it's like do your research, you know, use, use the internet, do your research, watch videos, hear experiences from uh, experienced travelers, ask, uh, go to forums. Uh, send emails, inquire, you know, uh, it's always good. Like the amount, it's tremendous, the amount of information that is out there. So you can already start with that. Then start with yourself, you know, because, you know, like that lack of confidence uh, about traveling, it doesn't come from nowhere. It comes also from within, because if you're not confident in yourself, first of all, like, you know what you want and you know what you're worth and uh, uh, you know how to set boundaries and to mm -hmm. say no and to stay cautious, but use your common sense. Don't be afraid. Don't be uh, fearful of everything and anything like, like, like uh, this like unreasonable fear. No, don't be like that because then you ruin the experience for yourself. Just 
you know, learn how to set boundaries, how to say no, because especially if you're a female uh, solo traveler, uh, you'll get a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. It's inevitable. You will get a lot of attention. Uh, but that's from where comes my, uh, my tip of uh, 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 try to blend in by uh, uh, using like uh, dressing like local people and stuff like that. So learn how to set boundaries and say no. Like, for instance, if someone will come ask you for your phone number, just don't hesitate to say no. 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 Yeah. I should give you my number, you know? Uh, yeah, things like that. Be, uh, be, uh, be cautious, um, you know, like uh, don't uh, uh, drink things that are open and stuff like that. Like, just be cautious, you know? Because you don't want to be, you don't want to end in situations that are, that can be uh, deadly, you know? And we know a lot of, uh, it happened to a lot of solo female travelers. So also be sure the quality, like the person, if you're traveling with people, choose wisely with whom you're traveling. People who want to ruin the trip for you. People who are like, like think the same way. People you you get along with. Uh, People who are easy to communicate with. Uh, You know, things like this. You just, you don't, because you're spending your money, you know, on the trip. You don't want to ruin it, you know. You don't want to ruin it for yourself. So act, I think, accordingly. That's all. Yeah. And I guess, uh, like you said, confidence is something that comes over time. The more you do it, the more you travel, the more you get out of your comfort zone, the more more you meet people, the more confident you become. It's just a question of time. Yeah, exactly. And I, w- I just want to say something. Okay, this is this is this comes from my uh, personal experience. It's just like just like a few years ago, I was, you know, like a very adventurous and all of that, you know, like um I had a very high self uh, esteem and confidence in the way I was traveling, the way I was approaching the world and all of that. But like once you meet like certain people who don't have like the same vision or the same uh, values and stuff and unfortunately you might be you you, you get influenced you you can uh, 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 you can become influenced by that um my advice is to choose your cycle wisely is to know um to to, to have to be to be surrounded with people who understand your vision who understand your 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 um, your your crave for for uh, for traveling and for adventure and all of that, because you know they might stop you, they might hinder you, and you don't want to you don't need that, you know. And it happens to a lot of uh, people. I I know I was one of them, and I know a lot of people to whom it happened. So uh, don't let that happen to you. The most important thing is to uh, realize that, and then get out of that because you know you get comfortable in it and no now i might say that i'm relearning relearning how to be out there and to just um fully experience the land the people the country you know so yeah that's also another thing i wanted to share <laughs> i love it love it i think it's it's very important because you surround yourself with people who are confident and who are going to help you in one way or the exactly. other to boost your confidence. Yeah, people are confident won't hinder you. Exactly. Look, people who are confident about them themselves and in what you're doing, they won't hinder you. They will push you uh, forward. Absolutely. This is something that we also advise in the world of hiking and backpacking. You always want to tag along with people who have more experience and people who can push you to become a better version. Uh, Zainab, there is a question for you that I don't want to miss. This is a question from Simo. And he said, for Zainab, why Africa? A vacation in Africa, for example, Tanzania is pretty expensive. Uh, do you have anything that you want to add in there? Uh, okay, that's a question I received from uh, Abdullah also from Somaliland. I don't know if you're here, Abdullah, but he asked me this question yesterday. You know, since that I have a full-time job uh, currently, it's, um, I just save. You know, and it's also about priorities. What is important for you in life? Is it important for you to buy clothes every month, to go to expensive places every now and then, 
to uh, afford like i don't know expensive uh, i don't know whatever you know it it depends on your uh, uh priorities for instance my priority is to live the best life i can and that's for me to be able to see the world that's a priority for me so i i i um i orient my efforts and my finances towards that goal and that's it just becomes intuitive i don't have to think a lot about it because because it's what i want it's a priority for me Mm-hmm. So I I I I use I I I work I use uh, my savings for to travel. Yeah, I work I save I, because I don't get money from the sky. Of course, you gotta work for the money, you know. So and use the money for where you want uh, to uh, for the things that you enjoy in life. It's as simple as that. Yeah, <laughs> because you know I get a lot this question like, okay, you're you're a, a female solo traveler, like who affords who who pays for your travels? You know, because people they have a lot of assumptions, like they have a lot of assumptions, like uh, who pays for your travels, mm-hmm. who pays for your stays, and all of that. It's yeah, it's a, the, the answer should be obvious, and this ans- this question should should not be asked to women. because are you going to ask this question to a man like it's the same process you know i also i also want to add to that uh, zainab mentioned earlier about how she was able to land a collaboration for her trip in in zanzibar so she basically leveraged her her skill of taking photos to to get a free stay in one of the hotels in jambiani so yeah. it's not just a question about money obviously you need money to travel but you can also be a little bit creative what are some of the skills that you can leverage are you a good writer photographer videographer storyteller can you monetize you. travel for free or even travel for cheap so that that's something to that, think about that's also something that is very important um uh, there is there is a traveler an algerian vlogger that i love so much his name is khubeib and he's just a genius vlogger and i'm learning a lot from him like i keep watching his videos to learn like the tricks and and stuff this guy is simple it's very simple it depends on what you want from travel do you want to experience the area or the country in the cheapest way possible are you aiming for luxury resorts uh, it depends on your objective what is your objective from travel is it to meet local people is it to i don't know like to post pictures that you are in this hotel and that hotel then you need to choose what you want and as habiba said use your skills uh, khubaib also uses his skills in editing in um a website a configuration and all of that to land projects to finance his his uh, his uh, his um, his travels you know you got to work you got to work to make money to travel easy right. you know but you need to be creative get creative use your skills blogging photography videography uh, web uh, website development anything coding any anything anything especially now with covid and the situation in the world like we can work virtually you we can work from home or anywhere in the world provided you have a laptop and a strong and solid internet collect, connection so you can get really creative with your income streams and what you can do with that and it will get you places eventually absolutely and uh, it's interesting because travel right now is a lot easier than than before there are so many ways to make it happen It's not that travel is expensive but sometimes we're just not flexible. I mean, if you want luxurious vacations and travel and staying in resorts that's going to cost you, but if you're flexible and you're willing to rough it, you can still make it happen. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Awesome. Well, Zainab, we have been going for 1 hour and I really enjoyed oh this. Oh my god. <laughs> Because it was nice, that's why. That's why. <laughs> I absolutely enjoyed it. Me too, me too. I was looking forward to this. It's nice to to meet another fellow traveler and learn and I did there's so much that I learned from you too. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me.
Yeah. Okay, so uh, before we close out, uh, do you have anything else that you want to share, Zainab? I mean, uh, just be yourself and pursue the thing that you love the most, whatever it is. Uh, don't let negative people, negative energy, negative situations get between you and what you desire the most. Do it because there will be a time wh when you will regret not doing it earlier. That's it. That's also I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Zainab. <laughs> and thank you thank for you. everyone thank who joined Thank you. Thanks for everyone who joined us today. Be sure to go and follow Zainab and share your adventures with us. Uh, this live stream is going to be shared for those who were not able to, to watch it earlier. Uh, I appreciate you, Zainab. I appreciate you and giving us of your time. And I can't wait to see more of you. Yeah. And I can't wait to come visit in Arizona. Yeah. Yes, come come <laughs> visit us. You will love it. It's a beautiful city. I will. I will. I will. I will. All right, take care of yourself and happy new year. Thank you. Thank bye. you everybody who was here. Bye-bye. Happy new year.